Hello, welcome back to Blender Sushi Live Noting. In this episode, I'm gonna do like a casual explorations of the the new version of Animation Notes. It's its version 2.0. Um, I think a lot of efforts has uh, have been put by IN developers and uh, to make this an Animation Notes become a very solid um, add-on. I haven't been using um, animation nodes on my Mac, but I can use it on my Windows because it's, my computer is a lot faster here. So I thought I might give it a go um, and let's see what animation nodes um, can do. Um, I basically will cover, um, today I will cover this uh, distribute matrices and kind of explore some of the follow-up nodes. Follow-up nodes is actually very powerful here uh, with animation nodes version 2. There are a lot of follow-up and follow-up is just a way you can easily offset and manipulate um, all kind of uh, value and I think in this case it's the offset matrix. That's the one that's kind of important. So I'll just get started real quick start from scratch make sure your animation notes is the latest one the one I have is I think version 2.0 something let me check in the user preferences animation notes this is version 2.0.3 I grabbed this from graphical.com um, yeah, if you have older version of animation notes, you need to uninstall it first, delete all the folders related to the add-on, and then you can install version two. Okay, let's start right away, and we're gonna use uh, just the monkey head for this. I'm gonna play around with the instancing in animation notes. This is one thing that I think animation note is very good at instancing and animations of all sorts basically like um, I think matrix transformations uh, especially pretty robust here already and with animation nodes version 2 most of the nodes are vectorized if not all I think so you don't need to use um, you don't need to use looping anymore in the past we need to do uh, looping to use looping and use object transform and to do all kind of uh, like uh, multiple values operations but with this version of animation nodes you don't need to do that anymore and there's a lot more going on so I'll start with distribute matrices actually in the past I'll show you what I usually do normally, normally I will go to mesh generators and use either line, grid or cylinder um, for example, if I use grid, and I'm using this uh, grid mesh to to generate some instance objects. So let me try doing that. Object transform output and plug the object there and vertices there. So I get a grid of monkey head. So this is the, the master monkey head. I usually keep it on the side for now. But this is how I usually do it. Um, you can use a different generator mesh, like cylinder should actually work. Let's see, one, two, three. I, I think I can use shift and plug that in. So we have cylinder kind of uh, cylinder points to generate the monkey head um, wonder why resolution doesn't give me mm, maybe there is a bug or maybe I don't need to use the cap oh well anyway we're not going to use the grid mesh for this. We're just going to use the distribute matrices. This is more powerful. You have a lot of options like 
vertices, circle, grid, linear. And since this guy actually generate transform in, in using matrices uh, data format, so instead of using object transform output, I will use the matrix, object matrix output. And we can still use the same um, objects, matrices, plug into this guy, and this one goes in there. And we should have our monkey heads. So that's the default linear with a option size or step. So we can have this um, line, um, monkey head distributed in line. This is pretty intuitive and very, very powerful. and yeah, you notice this is actually really fast as well. Um, step, if you want to use like a stepping value. And let's go to grid. Grid is pretty much um, easy to understand there. It generates grid of points. Um, it generates grid of matrices actually, like um, and the matrices uh, we use to instance the monkey head. If you see the lines, the dotted lines there, that's because of the, the parenting. By default, animation nodes put everything under this empty. So that can be really handy. But you don't want to see the line all the time. So you can hide it from here. Or you can also hide it from here. Tap U and hide relationship lines. Okay, so we can have a lot of uh, monkey heads like this. That's cool. And there's also a circle. Circle distribute the objects like this. Um, there must be a way to control the rotations, but in this case, we don't worry too much about it. Just play around with it. And also vertices. Vertices must be something, if you have like um, an object in the scene, like uh, the icosphere, for example, and using object, grab the object mass data and plug this into the vertices. It should be duplicated on um, the mesh points. There's also this normal that you can plug in the vertex normal, but I vertex location to the normal. But I think there should be a way to get the the normal data. Extract polygon transformation, transform polygons, H of polygons. Well, points list normal, calculate normal, matrix to point. Well, I was expecting this one should work, but then this one I'll only give a single value, but so. So I don't know about the normal at the moment. I have to ask um, a and developer. So anyhow, anyhow, we are we are done with the matrices. Um, let's get the monkey head back. Let's just use a uh, grid for now. Let's try five by five by five matrices. And let's try some of the follow-ups. I'll, I'll save this real quick. So follow-up nodes by default. You're probably wondering what all this kind of do. But if you have follow-up, just search for offset, I think. So offset will work with follow-up. And usually anything, any nodes that kind of work with follow-up nodes, we'll have these green dots. Um, so if I try plugging this in and let's play with a, let's play with the rot the scale, for example, just the scale. If I scale this down for the end value, the follow-up should give us some effects. Let's try the wiggle effects, for example. So wiggle, wiggle nodes kind of giving offset. And since we have the matrices, plug into offset matrices, with this follow-up, we can kind of uh, generate offset using the wiggle. 
So see, can you see it? So if I make it like make this smaller, so there's like a wiggle effects going on. You can increase the the value offset. So that's the wiggle. Wiggle is like um, it's almost like a noise actually. But uh, the naming is quite funky. But anyhow, that's how it works. You can increase the number of points. Still working, and it is actually very very fast. Um, yeah, that's with wiggle. You can pick some of this uh, fall off. Random, of course, give you randomness. Um, the one I like is uh, delay. I think delay is pretty cool. Actually, fade and interpolate actually very cool you kind of uh, mix interpolate with uh, with a delay for example um, actually delay is a bit complex let's try point distance so point distance you can grab like um, for example an empty and get the objects transform transform um, object transform input get the locator and the locations of the locator and this goes into the follow and now that point position is uh, being calculated um, and this will affect all the object instance um, because of these nodes. So we can increase the size, for example. So, so that points is affecting the monkey head. It's very cool, actually, very very fast as well. I'm pretty kind of pretty excited about this animation nodes version two. There's a lot here to 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 test. Um, so. Yeah, that's the thing with the scaling. Um, we can, like I said, play around with the size, follow width. But I think I like this interpolate follow because this one can give you like um, elasticity. So if I kind of animate this guy and then kind of moving the empty. Now you can see as the empty moves, we get this um, interpolate follow. -off. I think it's a very cool effect. I wonder if it's actually can do like a, if there is like a delay that I can also use here. So delay for time. So this one give a different kind of effects. Still pretty cool. This delay, uh, you can see it's kind of uh, doing the instance one by one. And I'll increase the number of frames. And because we plug this into the interpolate follow, we get this elastic animations um, as a bonus. So I think that's very cool. And you can actually mix and match the follow as well. So I have not tried all these. Some of them are a little bit more complicated, but I think sound one is very cool. Um, and you can also mix invert and there's evaluate all the all sort of stuff object controller object controller is cool um, if we use like a, try um, an icosphere for example and make these objects um, wireframe select your objects and plug this into this guy you can see the the icosphere now affecting the monkey head You can, I think you can rotate it as well. Oh, you can increase the offset and follow with. Very cool. It's almost like um, almost like dynamic paints effects uh, where you can have like a pen and a pen brush and a canvas, and then if the if the brush is close to the canvas, it gives you some effects. And everything is um, on the fly. This thing is actually really fast. I was surprised. 
very surprised. This is very cool. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So, yeah, I think that's pretty much it with the um, explorations of animation nodes version 2. I don't know what else is new, but there's there's so many things here actually. And if you're if you're very um, confident with your Python, you can use script node and then use the follow -up with the script node. I believe that's possible. I'm not sure. I have I have not tested it, but yeah, I think transform kind of animations um, and follow -up is very very powerful. And instancing, especially instancing with animation nodes, is like wow brilliant if you if you generate like some object using sphere chalk and then you instance it with animation nodes you get a really powerful system there uh, once again so yeah in this so in this video we cover distribute matrices i like these nodes a lot and also this uh, offset matrix and some of the follow-up nodes so it's really up to you how you want to use it i think um it's very very powerful. I, I I should test it with with text objects and all other objects in Blender. I have not actually play around with um with particle system with animate in animation nodes. Maybe I have to test this. Um, the others. If you are actually just starting out with animation nodes, um, try all these nodes and see what it does. Basically, you need to understand like uh there are data types like integer floats and then there's list as well and you can gen use generator like generator nodes like this range and there's this random wiggle which is like noise value all kind of um, like low level kind of nodes vector this is vector math and there's rotation Euler matrices all very cool stuff actually um yeah i'm i think i uh, i have to thanks jack luce juke uh, jack's look and all the animation nodes developer for these nodes i think it makes blender become like really really powerful it's beyond what uh, people might think about open source um tools so i recommend you for node system use animation nodes and also sphere chalk. Sphere chalk is uh, especially more powerful for modeling stuff and manipulating polygons. Animation nodes is more powerful for instancing and animations. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it for this uh, video uh, live noting. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks again for tuning in. Bye.